Well, that's not nice. Well, anti-Joe Biden chanting has continued over the weekend at various events across the United States. Chants were erupting in crowds at the Mississippi State vs Alabama game on Saturday, the Braves vs Dodgers baseball game on Sunday, and even at a Luke Bryan concert. Up next, folks, if you don't believe in Agenda 21, if you don't see it playing out before us, I don't think the internet can help you. This was the first attempt to take the world from us about two decades ago, and it flopped. The land use map of the U.S. was shot down unanimously in Congress. And why wouldn't it be? 30% of the country off limits. 50% highly restricted. Pack the humans into little cell living spaces in 100 story tall buildings in 200 to 100 million person megacities. It's literally the scariest and most horrifying plan ever. But it died in Congress, right? Wrong. It's back, and you may have heard of the 30 by 30 plan. This is absolutely 100% a different mask on the same horse. The goal is to crush the economy and create desperation, and then build back better with their new paradigm of a caste system and slavery. For real. That's what's happening to us right now with COVID being so overplayed, with the mandates, loss of jobs, economic strife, labeling half of us domestic terrorists. Many of you complain that I should leave politics out of this, but this is plainly not politics. This is good versus evil, and the prize is Earth. There's nowhere to run because everywhere is going to be bad. Today, I'm gonna to give you my retort to the idea that one government policy will rule the world. One of the reasons why we identify who it is that we're speaking to here, seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors, is, you know, for me, uh, as someone who's been a lifelong entrepreneur, as someone who does invest, you know, there's a certain amount of practicality. There's a certain amount of you need a good head on your shoulders to get to that level. And I'm not trying to necessarily call anyone out here um, or, or to you know, accuse anyone of anything. But, you know, for me, what sets people who are very successful in business, who are very successful investors apart is that practicality. And what we hear from people on this channel who are perhaps they feel like they have fewer options is there's nowhere to go in this world. Stop running, stop playing hopscotch, stop moving between different jurisdictions because you're not going to have anywhere to go. The high taxes, the lack of freedoms, all of that is going to uh, encompass wherever it is that you want to go. Uh, and yet, I hear from both sides here at Nomad Capitalist, we hear the people who say, hey, the, the world is going to become uh, one world government. On the other hand, we hear a lot about nationalism, how countries should be cracking down. And it's hard for me to kind of reconcile those two things. Uh, here's what I know. I know that having five options is better than having one option. We talked about an interview recently where, where Dominic Frisbee said that the sovereign individual is going to rule uh, the coming decades, the person who can leave their country, go to Mexico. If Mexico mistreats them, they can go to Thailand, they can go to Colombia, they can go somewhere else. He even mentioned some of the countries we talk about here on this channel. And, you know, five chances to win are better than one. And so the first thing first, uh, if you're saying, hey, the world is going to hell in a handbasket, the whole thing's falling apart, what can you do? Well, you know what? I'd, I'd at least like to have, you know, five chances to win rather than your one chance. And so, you know, for me, if you want to protect yourself, the first thing to do is to have as many uh, chances to, to succeed as possible. Um, I happen to believe that you will see, and if you would, I think if you travel all around the world, uh, you would realize, uh, even right now in this crazy state of affairs that we're in, uh, that certain countries uh, need investment more than others. Certain countries just culturally are more welcoming of people, uh, foreigners and others. Uh, certain countries realize uh, that they need to be competitive more than others. And so if you're sitting in the United States, uh, or if you're sitting in any of the countries that have relatively stable, well-traded currencies, they can just print out more money, send out checks to people to sit at home. Don't worry about this whole thing. We'll send you three grand a month you know, just stay at home and watch Netflix. If you're in one of those countries, it may seem, the legacy brand countries, it may seem like, hey, that's what everyone's doing. Uh, and certainly that policy had some benefits. You could argue that policy had some benefits over a country like a Colombia or a Serbia, countries we talk about where they gave you 100 euros or they gave you basically nothing in some cases. And they said, hey, you figure it out. Uh, you know, there have been certainly ill effects of each. I think you could argue that the ill effects of just sending people $3,000 checks or whatever it is every month um, 
will have longer term effects financially and culturally than you know, seeing some businesses close down. Neither are, are preferable. And certainly you've looked at some countries like Mexico and, and those in Scandinavia and some Eastern Europe where nothing's really closed down and they've really worked to keep things open. I have to tell you when, when you put the sign up and I tell you to put it down for me when I go teach. Why do you keep doing that? Well, I mean, you just got to put it down. Uh, but I don't want to. I, I just want you to do it when you lift it up for you. Oh, so you want me to lift it up and put it down? Yeah. And you don't want to do anything? Daddy. Yes. Listen to me. When you're done with the pie, you get put down when big girl, one girl come in and they need to go teep teep. Oh. Poo -poo. Oh, oh, okay. So you gotta put it down for the girls. Oh. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. Can she come over to my house and give a little lecture to my husband? I feel like I know her mother. Right? <laughs>